Hey guys, I'm gonna quickly walk you through some InDesign stuff. Uh, this week, we really just want you to play around with it, mess around the file, and kind of familiarize yourself with the controls. So this is what InDesign looks like when you boot it up. Go ahead and click New File. Sometimes you have to click it twice to get this to pop up, but this new document page is gonna pop up and we're gonna change our units right off the bat to inches. We want two eight and a half by 11 pages. Uh, we want those to be facing each other, so facing pages. And then come down to margins. Now, at first, these will all be linked together, meaning they're all the same. So go ahead and click the unlink button and change our bottom margin to 0.75. So that's three, we want our bottom to be three quarters of an inch. And then hit create. And so, what we're going to have here is um, just like a blank InDesign document. See how our page layout over here is um, disjointed. But if we go to properties and add a page, it will create a spread, right? So this is what a spread looks like. We're going to jump into our guides. So go to layout, create guides. And what I'm wanting you guys to do is under rows and columns, make each of these six and go ahead and make sure your preview is checked. So when you start to um, enter these numbers, even like looking at the drop down, you can start to see the effect of what you're doing. Um, just this preview is incredibly helpful. So you can start to see how these grids and guides are going to be set up. We want our gutters to be that default. Um, and go ahead and make sure the fit guides is to the margin and not the page. So go ahead and hit OK. And we now have two pages with grids and guides set up on it. But we want to get rid of this first page. And so this can be a little tedious and tricky sometimes. But go ahead and go to your pages. Make sure that you have both two and three highlighted. And then go to allow selected spreads to shuffle and turn that off. Then click on your first page and delete that spread. And boom, there you go. That first spread is deleted. Um, what you can do is create more pages and they will pop in in this format again, but if you go back and select all of them, turn that back on, you'll be able to make pages and then go back and delete that first page. And so it's kind of like a workaround that gets you around having that first page. Just make sure that um, you've turned your shuffling off. Um, just as you're working through. So leading that spread, right? So we want you to have like four pages of content and you'll notice we deleted our pages with guides by accident, but it's really quick to just take the create guides, type in a couple sixes and hit okay and boom, our grids are back. So, what are these grids for, you may ask? Well, we have content that we are going to be able to put into this program, right? These are great for making resumes, making portfolios. If you go ahead and go over to your sidebar tools over here and go to the rectangle frame tool. And what this does is this lets you draw rectangles that will snap to the uh, grids that you've made, right? And so as long as you're like relatively close to a grid line, when you click it, you hold and drag and you can draw some rectangles and, and fill in some of these shapes. So let's say, and you remember, you don't want to cross a gutter and just leave it there. Um, you can edit these after the fact, see how I kind of, I purposefully missed this one. So you can take these and just go ahead and align them back to where you want them, right? And what these frames do is they frame the content that you're gonna drop in. 
So let's say I just have a couple of fun frames I'm gonna drop in, right? Just like this. You can then go to File, Place, and I'm just gonna grab some of the rep thumbnails, <laughs> um, just like four of them. And what we can do is as long as you place them within the frame, they're going to show up and be uh, bound by that frame that you're placing them in, right? If you try and place an image outside of a frame, it will still place it. But what will happen is it'll probably come in at like a huge file size out here. If you have a frame already selected, then it's going to overwrite whatever you already put in that frame. Um, and remember, Control Z is a great way to undo that. But for example, my banner, I know is a huge file size. I keep having this frame selected and I don't mean to, but see, just like that, if you don't have it in a frame, it comes in like at pure pixel length and it's often really, really huge. So that being said, you can see these frames are, are cropping our images. Uh, if you click, if you're hovering over a frame, you'll see these circles pop up. Go ahead and right click on it. And this allows you to drag your um, image around on the inside. That's like the boundary of the image, right? Um, and you can also scale it or rotate it by holding shift. You can rotate it, have as much fun as you want. You can stretch them in funny ways. But what you can also do is uh, if you go ahead and click on one and then right click, go down to fitting and there's some options that we have to work with, right? So the fill frame proportionally, what that does is it will um, take your content and grab the shortest uh, dimension of it and make it fill. And so that will leave part of your content cropped out. Like right here, the sides are cropped off. Fill content proportionally, make sure that all of your content fits the frame, but some of your frame might be empty. Conversely, the uh, fit to frame allows the content to fit. It brings the frame around the content um, while clicking the fit content to frame does the same thing, except um, for when, for example, like this image is huge down here. I go ahead and fit Fitting frame to content will increase the frame size, while fitting the content to the frame will reduce the frame. And so we can just go ahead and drop this back down to where we wanted it again. Now make sure to snap your stuff within the guides and grids, right? And so we have all of these really fun images that we can then Get in our portfolio, right? Look at this. Uh, you'll see this is kind of a low res image, um, but it, when you have higher quality PDFs and stuff, each image has a file size. Uh, often it's really big. And so what's happening is the display performance, it drops down the resolution of a lot of the content you have in here. Um, and that's just so InDesign can run. When you start to have really long documents like 20, 30 pages. And if you have it on high quality display, you'll see that kind of adjusted a little bit. But um, when you do that for a, an entire document, it'll really slow down um, your stuff. So just know that until you export this as a PDF, it's not always what it looks like. Um, sometimes that resolution is dropped. So that being said, Let's put some text in this file. Now we have some stuff going on. I want this to fit content. Actually, I want, I get it mixed up sometimes. Fit frame proportionally. Me and this little cute little Pomeranian. Um, so go over to the text tool. And what you can do is you can draw text boxes. And again, we're going to snap to our guides and our grids. And 
we are going to be really picky about your texts. Use like Arial or Helvetica, stick to those. And the, the reason is, is that um, they're really nice fonts. They give you family options, right? So like bold, italic, narrow versions. You can have font families and it allows you to just uh, type clean, right? So a lot, a lot of times there's the... Um, the default text was it? it's like lorem ipsum delor uh you should be able to insert fill with placeholder text right at least props latin in here uh lorem ipsum delor is a, a funny meme that some of my friends and i have but um so you can start to see that based on how much text you want how much white space you want you can start to fill up this stuff um, you may wonder why you want to add placeholder text at all. And the reason is that sometimes uh, you're just trying to get a layout of your stuff and you want to lay it out before you start to fill it with information just so you can judge how much space you're going to need. It's actually a really helpful tool. Let's go ahead and type Helvetica. It looks like I don't have this on my personal device, but I know the school computers have it. So... Um, Go ahead and use like Helvetica or Arial. And once you have a nice spread that you are happy with, um, what you can then do is export this um, into a PDF. And so first off, whenever you save a file, um, go ahead and save as so you can name it. I'm going to name this tutorial. I kind of already had a, a prep file ready to go, but you also want to be sure to hit this button called package right and so what this does is this kind of saves a type of a small version of the images or pdfs or documents that you have in the file so that when you open this on say another workstation or another device it will keep all that information instead of um, having broken links so we're going to hit package uh, click that same folder and it will make a folder for you and just go ahead and click through it and um, just do that every time you're about to close out if you have added any images and then you can go ahead and export your file and so we want to export these as spreads as opposed to individual pages so um, go ahead and pick your location hit save and it'll pull up this export. If you export as pages, each individual eight and a half by 11 will be in line, like one after the other vertically in your PDF. We want to export the spreads, meaning we want two eight and a half by 11s side by side when we export. So go ahead and click that and hit export. Click through any little errors, it'll yell at you. Um, right now it's telling me that some of my text is hidden. Uh, you'll see these little red pluses if that is ever the case. And then we can go to our file explorer. Just a second water, drag this over here. And stay teaching. And here's our PDF and it exported uh, our, both our pages, right? So this is the page that we were just playing at. And um, this is that blank second spread that I made that we want you to fill up your content with. And you can start to see um, these gutters are all even, and it's a really nice way to kind of like divide your space. Uh, you have six rows and six columns per page. So I just did like a full bleed over here. And um, it just, it really organizes stuff really nice. Um, it's clean and just familiarize yourself with the controls this week. We're gonna get way in depth with this. We're gonna learn about master pages and um, like kerning and leading with text. And it's just gonna be a, a lot of information that you're gonna get to uh, absorb. So yeah. Uh, keep up the great work and I will see you guys Thursday.